telling you right right now, like, uh, just, oh my gosh, just start saving money now because you're going to want everything. We more than doubled what we thought we were going to be, and we more than tripled than what we were last year. Wow. Ben, you're not just taking designer con to the next level. Like you said, screw you next level. We're going intergalactic with this thing. Hello. What's going on? Can We're, you hear me okay? I can hear you. We're recording. Let's get this done. It's hot okay, here. Oh, it's hot. On time, Gary. Look at him. <laughs> on time, Gary. <laughs> Guys, Gary is apparently sitting in the dark in his underwear. I am sitting in the dark in my underwear, no oh, li- no lights on, because the, I might the AC is broken into my office. So the guy was supposed to show today to fix it, but he didn't. So it's a little warm in here. I got the that win- sucks. I got the windows open. I, I'm afraid to turn on the lights because those are going to generate heat. I know the monitor's putting out heat. Let's let's go. Let's do this. So. <laughs> Three, two, one. Hey, toy family. Welcome to the Marsham Toy Hour, where we discuss anything and everything designer toys. I'm in my undies, Gary Ham. <laughs> I'm Teresa Hawkins. I'm George Gaspar. And joining us today is the one and only 3D Retro Decon Toy Geek, Ben Goretzky. Welcome, uh, Ben. Yes. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm sitting fully clothed in air conditioning. So, there you go. <laughs> oh, the king of the castle over there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> ben, why are you our most difficult guest to date? Um, <laughs> because of all those titles you gave him at the beginning. <laughs> I, uh, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I just, <laughs> I, I travel, and then I get sick, and then when um when i do plan something my wife tends to uh tell me hey let's go out to dinner and uh i completely forget that we're supposed to record <laughs> so yes. i apologize so what the listeners don't know is it's, it usually takes two attempts to get ben on for re- record the first one is usually just a setup where he has to cancel on you and then the <laughs> second one is kind of like, hey, you cannot miss this one. So that's what happened this week. Except then it was the, this is the third one. So. Right. Is this the third one? Yeah. Now we're recording on Saturday night, and uh, let's do this thing. So we're going to talk to some designer con tonight. Yes. Awesome. Let's do yes, it. So, Ben, I have been waiting. I don't know, it's been like over a month now, I think, since Gary was like, we're going to get Ben on. Yeah, it was like before five points. It's like, we're yeah. going to get Ben on. And Ben has all these secrets, and I can't tell you, but Ben's going to tell you. So I've been, like, waiting, and the hype is real. I am ready to hear Decon secrets. So there's, the, so since the last time that I was on the show, we were discussing how the show's growing and certain things that we're doing. And since then, I've had many trips, many meetings, many phone calls, and uh, it's just interesting uh, how certain things are going. Uh, so there's different things going on with vendors. There's different things going on with the Anaheim Convention Center. There's just all kinds of different things going on. Where do you want to start? Okay. I think what I'm probably most curious about, as we saw on Instagram feed, you went to Japan and you had a meeting with Akashi uh, Tasuhiko. He's the founder of Medicom. And you yes. were kind of hinting at there's something very exciting going on with Medicom and DesignerCon. Should we start with that? Or can you talk about that at all? Sure, sure. Let's let's yeah, definitely because there was a huge press release that went out about a week after that picture went up on our Instagram feed. And the big news is is that for the first time ever in Medicom's history, Medicom is actually going to be doing a show in the United States, and wow. that shows designer con. Um, cool. Congrats. Yeah, so they've never done anything like this, and the reason is is when Medicom likes to be involved in something, they want to make sure that they blow things away in terms of, like, size and just 
how they present themselves. So, of course, you know, we sat down with Akashi and we talked about how, you know, they're basically their vision on how they want to be presented at the show. Mm -hmm. And so they are bringing so much amazing stuff to the show. They're bringing, you know, a lot of their uh, bare bricks that are highly wanted by our collector base. They're bringing sync products, uh, which are very hard to get a hold of here in the U.S. They're bringing, you know, popular VCDs and all kinds of stuff. Basically, they're bringing, like, their entire line of products nice and they are gonna be in like this 5500 square foot booth so like a home pavilion sort of thing yeah now part of the booth is going to be kind of like a history of metacom where you can see some of the older products that they've made and kind of shows a history of it but a lot of it is going to be displaying the new stuff which people are going to be able to purchase directly from metacom from their booth which is a hard thing to do because most of the time when you want to buy a Metacom product, you're buying it from a third party and you're right. paying a premium fee. So that's the huge news with Metacom that we got them to agree to come. And the other thing is on top of it, aside from them coming, they are going to be bringing about anywhere between five to 10 of some of the most popular Japanese artists and releasing really 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 exclusive small run merchandise that you will Ooh. only be able to find at designer con okay i'm excited now did you make the trip to japan solely to present to them or did you have secondary plans to see a convention and other things out there or was it just to visit no Medicom? it was it was literally the whole trip was to visit Metacom. wow yeah and and actually you know when we when we came down to sit down with them and talk to them the whole idea was like how do we just get them to come to the show and um the more we explain the show to them and the audience and how we're doing things this year and so on and so forth the more they got excited and the more they became vested into the show as well yeah well i that was like it was more than a worthwhile trip for you so i know it's a far plane right i mean did you get to do anything else while you were there um my wife and I went, and we were like, well, if we're going to Japan, we might as well stay at least a week. So, But it, the funny thing is, is in that time that we were there, there was actually another convention called, <laughs> at this, it was called Design Fest. Yes. <laughs> and it was amazing because it was like in, in one of their largest convention centers, thousands and thousands of square feet and it was once again like independent japanese artists and i was like holy (laughs) macro like i just want to invite all of these guys to come to decon and i talked to some of them uh luckily don from uh, a thousand toys was there with me to interpret data dub yep data dub don and he was talking to them on my behalf and unfortunately you know, one of the biggest problems is uh, these guys just don't have the means to get to, Mm -hmm. you know, Anaheim. So that's actually why Metacom is stepping in the way that they are, because a lot of these artists, even though they're really big artists in Japan, they do not have the means nor the language skills or the monetary fund or whatever it may be mm-hmm. to come all the way out to a show like designer con. And so they're making it possible for these guys to do it. Oh, I'm so excited. I can't wait to know who it's going to be. And these exclusive toys. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm telling you right, right now, like, uh, just, Oh, oh my gosh, wait. just start saving money now because you're going to want everything cuz i've i've looked oh. at everything and i'm like oh my god i want like one of everything and oh. it's just ridiculous it's just um, ridiculous yeah so it's going to be so well, freaking awesome guys in the giant pavilion thing i mean it sounds really really cool cuz i don't recall at least in the times i've been to decon seeing a setup like that i mean there was kind of the wrong english area but nothing that big it reminds wow. me a bit of what instinct toy was revealing for an upcoming show i think it was WonderCon. but they had like a giant massive booth set up you remember how we were looking at that gary on facebook right. can't remember what event it was actually a show that they're doing in asia i think it's either tokyo 
festival or haunt. It's it's one of the it's one of the up and coming toy shows that's happening like all over Asia. Hmm. But is, so, is, so is the Metacom booth similar? Like the idea of this giant area that yeah. kind of okay. Lots of displays, lots of toys behind glass that you can look at, and then you know a big setup for like. 10 registers so Jesus. hopefully lines move quick <laughs> and i mean there's That's there's so gonna cool. be it's gonna be awesome and the best part is the best part is if it was if it wasn't enough akashi is gonna be there wow. and oh, and cool. yeah and the metacom crew is gonna be there so all the people behind all these amazing toys that we collect they're gonna be there and you're gonna be able to say hi to them and you know just it's going to be great that's it's what decon is all about it's it's bringing our toy community closer to the fans so that you can actually meet the people behind the toys that you love yeah yeah totally i mean that's that's huge ben and um you know thank you to akashi and the medicom team for you know willing to do this i mean it's going to be a huge effort on their part to bring all the artists over and all their their history of toys and the back stock i mean it's going to be a huge expense and effort on their part to get here yeah and decon is very much participating in that <laughs> <laughs> well thank so, you ben it'll be awesome yeah. it'll be worth it yeah i hope so i certainly hope so man all right, that's awesome news. What so, else? Did is there anything better than I mean? Did should we have done some foreplay with some other things before? Did we just shoot our load, Ben? Or is there other news that we can disclose that's going to be just as good as that? Um, no, there's there's a few other things. Okay. So, um, you know, we've got um, Pop Life coming back, and they're coming back bigger than ever. So last year they had the area in the um, lobby. Yeah. And this year, they're actually going even bigger. They're, they're almost going to have a booth just about the same size as Metacom. <laughs> and they're actually going to have a stage in their booth. Jeez. And we're not really allowed to say what's going to be happening on that stage, but it's going to be quite entertaining. So that's one of the other things that's going on. And hey, then, ben. yeah. I'm sorry. I don't want to be stupid, but what's Pop Life? Pop Life is um, a lot of people know them as Mind Style, but they're also the ones that did the whole Ron English thing last year. All those, oh, statues, okay. Okay. yeah, all those statues that were brought in by Ron. That's that's Pop Life. Gotcha. Did they, okay. did they change their name from Mind Style to Pop Life? They've been using Pop Life for a while now. I think for at least I would think at least for the past five six years. Is it a, new, a different oh, really? company or is it the same company? I think it's the same company, just a new line of product. Uh, now, is Pop Life is also part of Propaganda, right? Or is that two separate things? Propaganda is actually Ron English's company. Pop Life, I believe, produces a lot of Propaganda product. I mean, mm-hmm. even 3D Retro produces some Propaganda product. So, Propaganda is Ron English's brand, if you want to. Okay. okay. So I got a cool. question okay. for you, Ben. I know, and I know some people, attendees or vendors, are they're going to be curious. So already, you kind of mentioned two companies have a lot of space within the new convention hall. Did you have to expand space, or did you have to take away space from new vendors? <laughs> so remind me the last episode that I was on. How how big did I tell you the show was going to be? I, I, have, well, I, don't <laughs> that's a, I don't know. It's a good <laughs> trivia question, but I don't remember. 50,000 square feet? I don't know. Well, it can't be 50,000. I think – so I think the last time I spoke to you guys, we told you that we took Hall C, which was 145,000 square feet, which compared to last year, it's about 50,000 square feet more than oh, last okay. year. Wow, okay. So maybe, maybe that's where the 50,000 came from. So – after going to visit Metacom and after talking to them about how big they want to be and, you know, figuring out that what we're going to do and all that, um, we had decided that we really need to open up the hall for traffic and we need to have more room. Luckily, we're in Anaheim, so they have lots of room. So we have decided that we are actually, we, we already did, we were tacking on another hall. So we're going to be in Hall C and D. 
And we are going to be totaling over 350,000 square feet. Oh, okay. So you just doubled what you thought you told us a couple months ago. <laughs> yes. We, we more than doubled what we thought we were going to be, and we more than tripled than what we were last year. Wow. wow. Holy crazy. crap. That's going to be huge. It's going to be a big show. Yeah. I remember when we were talking, you're like, oh, you know, Pasadena has three separate rooms and people always say that hall is better than that hall and blah, 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 and everyone's going to be in the same spot. And now yeah. you have two. <laughs> well, well, that's the thing. So um, even Pasadena has like – like when we when we were in Pasadena, we had the ballroom. We had Exhibit Hall A, Exhibit Hall B, and Exhibit Hall C. But when you were walking into Exhibit Hall A – the wall was already open to exhibit hall B. Mm -hmm. So yes. even though you were walking between exhibit hall A and B, you wouldn't know that you were in two separate halls because the wall was open. It's the yep. same thing. It's basically the same thing here that's going on with hall okay. C and D. But <laughs> while you have a show like WonderCon that's held in Anaheim that all the walls are open and you're using hall A, B, C, D, but to the person walking the hall, it's one big giant hall. It's okay. going to be the same thing here where we take two halls and we kind of combine them. So, cool. yeah. <laughs> that is so, so big. Like, I don't even know how to comprehend being able to walk through all of that in two days. It's, it's going to be awesome. That's why we need two and a half days. You're adding on a, a preview night, which is going to help us. Yes. It's actually called VIP night because – uh, you have to have a VIP ticket in order to come in Friday. What are the hours going to be like for that? Friday will be 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. Okay. Okay. So VIPs are able to – VIPs are the people that are – to us that are the hardcore collectors, that the people that want to be first to get everything, and uh, that's what they're going to be able to do. They get in before everyone else. Uh, Friday, they're the only ones in the show. Uh, aside from press and celebrities and media and things like that. And then Saturday and Sunday, they get into the hall an hour early. So they are literally the first ones in the hall every day or the only ones in the hall every day uh, getting the stuff that they want first before anybody else, before general admission at least. Wow. I mean, four hours seems longer than I expected for the Friday night piece of it, but that's that's awesome. Is there... Um, have you figured out the cost yet? We're 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 working on it, uh, okay. but you know my whole goal is still to keep it very affordable. Cool. At the at the end of the day, we will. St it it looks like, and, and this all goes back to like what we had discussions with Anaheim. Anaheim is a completely different beast than Pasadena in terms of costs, and I hope people understand that that by tacking on another hall, that we as designer con incur tremendous costs in order to do that but the other reason why we're doing it is because we understand that we need to have a lot of space and a lot of room for people to walk around because we don't want that sardine feel you know like where it's like just yeah. everybody's piling on top of each other so the costs have gone up a little bit but we we will still have something like if you still want a saturday or sunday ticket like a one day ticket, you can still get it for like twenty bucks. Sweet. Yeah, nice. Okay. Yeah. And so, and for yeah. VIP, I assume there's a limit. Do you disclose how many VIP tickets are being sold or is that a We hidden? still have to we still have to figure that out with uh our okay. good friend the fire marshal. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um so we we're still working on that, but it's actually very close to being decided there's probably going to be, in terms of VIP tickets, only a few thousand. And I know that sounds a lot when you say, oh, a few thousand. But noting that we are expecting expecting about fifty to 60,000 attendees this year, a few thousand is not that bad for VIPs. Especially when you're talking about only a few thousand people walking a 350,000 square foot hall. Yeah. Shoot, we could all get do the math there, Gary. How many square feet per person? <laughs> oh, never make an artist do math. We don't do math, Teresa. So Ben, I'm I'm curious. Uh, 
Do you have any concerns going from Pasadena to Anaheim and being three times bigger? I imagine there has to be a concern as you as keeping the reputation alive that has been what everyone's really loved about designer con to this point being a smaller event and the right vendors and keeping it um, independent companies and designers and stuff like that. With, but now with it tripling in size, is there any concern or are you having to say no to certain vendors now applying for booths? Um, is there a concern about keeping that feel? Yeah, there's always that concern. Yes. There is always that concern because we still want people to be able to talk to the artist and have that kind of independent feel. But at the same time, the show is growing. And in order to keep it going and to keep it alive, we, we need to make it bigger and expand. And before we even started this year, we already had a waiting list of almost 2,000 artists Holy and companies shit. that wanted to be part of this show. I know it sounds ridiculous, but yes, we had that many people. This is from around the world, mind you. Wow. 2000 so still insane. um and every time we do any kind of announcement whether it's some kind of an instagram post or some like especially when we did the announcement that metacom is coming mm-hmm. we we probably got another 500 people on the waiting list <laughs> that day alone wow. just people want to do the show so in terms of like hey do we have enough of these independent and small fun art companies that are really what our audience is looking for. Do we have enough of those to fill the hall? Definitely. We definitely have that. Okay. But um, we still sometimes pick and choose who goes because we still want to keep that feel of the show. Okay, good. Because that's probably the biggest concern I've heard from people is they're thinking that the convention is going to get too big and it's going to kind of lose that original feel of the independent, smaller vibe that designer cons always had. And as it continues to grow and you said it's three times bigger this year than what it was last year. So, yeah. you know, I think a lot of people are afraid that now you're going to start seeing like the tower of t-shirts and Warner brothers and all these licensed companies come in. So it's, it's good to hear that you are kind of turning away a lot of the, the licensed companies and stuff that will come in and kind of change the vibe. We have, we've had to turn down certain vendors. Um, not because they didn't carry cool products, but it's just because their products don't fit into our demographic. Okay. And mind you, we've always kind of had to do that on a smaller scale because we've had people come up to us and say like, oh, you guys are designer con. We sell designer soap. And we'll be like, <laughs> that's yeah, no not the wrong, same. wrong designer con. Or we've had, <laughs> we've had building contractors try to get large oh. booths with us because they design buildings and oh, we're like man. I don't think you understand what our <laughs> show is about so we've always had to turn away vendors we've always had to tell them like look this is not your show now in right. terms of pop culture there's still going to be a lot of pop culture because a lot of the artists out there still do pop culture products oh definitely and actually I don't I don't know if I mentioned it I I should have listened to the episode <laughs> that I did last, but I don't know if I mentioned in the last one, but this year we actually have Mondo participating at the show. So Mondo usually does a uh, their own show called MondoCon, mm-hmm. and they've actually decided not to do it this year, and they're doing a huge pavilion in our show. So there's going to be a big Mondo booth, and then what they've done is they've invited – probably about 20 of their top artists and each of these artists is going to have their own 10 by 10 booth to sell their stuff in that's huge too ben wow yeah it's it's going to be amazing because it's a lot of big names a lot of big names all these big booths it sounds so cool it's going to be so much fun how are we going to how are us little guys going to make a dent (laughs) yeah exactly you guys are going to do great (laughs) no you got you guys have nothing to worry about because what this is doing and this is where people need to understand why we're bringing in people like Metacom, why we're bringing in people like Mondo is because these bigger names bring in that audience that wants to see what these companies do. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, it just brings in more people into the hall. So, we can't get into a bigger show that's this much square foot and then still be like 37,000 people or 35,000 people are going to show up and it's going to be great. 
because the hall will be empty. It's going to be, you know, like a ghost town. So we need those people to fill the halls. And for you smaller guys, George, it presents a new audience to your products. So you're still going to have all those guys that come to Decon every year, but now you have this other new audience that's going to be walking the hall and being able to see your product and being able to see your art and being able to understand, wow, there's this whole other world related to all this other stuff that I already like. Yeah, I don't see it hurting. Yeah, and as a collector, I mean, I still like the artists I like. So, I mean, I'm still going to go to all the booths I normally would. It's just some are going to be these new big ones that are probably going to be super awesome to check out as well. So, I don't, know, I don't see it hurting the small booths either, Ben. I mean, I'm no. still going to want to go to all that kind of stuff. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, I, th- I think so. I think at the end of the day, it benefits everybody. Yeah. I mean, really what it means, if you have a savings account, just drain it for designer con. Yeah. Oh God. I'm, you borrow from still, the kids' college fund, do whatever you got to do. <laughs> yeah. I mean, think about how much I spent at five points, Gary. Oh, Good no. God. It was insane. Was D-Con gonna do? <laughs> oh my gosh. You, yeah, I don't know. I've had people come up to us and say like, I have a separate bank account for Decon, where as <laughs> oh, soon yeah, as the show's over. Good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Now, Ben, uh, I guess since we're talking about pop culture, there is another company just before um, going to Five Points that we learned, the FYE, uh, Four Year Entertainment. It's one of like the, the stores in the mall, but they sell a lot of pop culture merchandise, and now they're starting to get into designer toys a little bit with exclusive colorways and stuff of designer toy product like um, Andrew Bell's Kill Cat, and they're working with Mighty Jacks to produce some um, stuff for them as well. Like I think recently they're going to have like a Nickelodeon or SpongeBob um, XX Ray, you know, mini series and stuff like that. So is Fye going to be at Designer Con this year? Um, actually, Fye has not approached us. Huh. They haven't. They haven't. Yeah. Which, you know, if you know anybody over there, you know, send them our way. Technically, booths are sold out, but we have still some sponsorship opportunities we can offer them. Wow. So, well, and, that, and that surprises me just because they were at Five Points and they now might, they're going to be at San Diego. I'm just surprised they wouldn't want to also be at Decon. Maybe they just don't know about our show. It's, you know, everyone knows plus, about your show. Well, <laughs> here's the other thing that um, there's still this perception that Designer Con is a small show. So, um, although Five Points was kind of a small show, but I think Fye is is local to New York, oh, sure. so maybe ah. that's why they did it. But yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, sometimes the perception that we're still a small show that sometimes deters people from doing our show, especially the the larger corporate companies, which is fine. We're we're actually okay with that. It kind of you know keeps things at bay. We don't get too inundated by these large corporate entities coming to us and being like, we're going to be part of your show. So it's like, yeah, it's, it's yeah. sometimes it's good and sometimes it's bad. Right. You only want people there that are going to be you know, relevant to what, what you're wanting to do at the convention. But as, as far as like the um, directly designer toy related booths, you know, the larger companies, Medicom and Mondo and uh, Pop Life all going with uh, really nice large booth spaces. Can we expect someone like um, like Kid Robot? Are they going to be going larger with their booth space for Designer Con this year? And the only reason I ask is because a lot of us were just at Five Points Festival, and Kid Robot didn't have much of a presence there. Is as, as much as we think we would. You know, they're a big company within our scene, and and you know, you go to Five Points Festival, and they just kind of had like a standard ten foot by ten foot booth, and it wasn't an end cap or corner or anything like prominently displayed they were kind of in the middle of an aisle um and i know the first year they were like right when you're back in the front door it was at the nice size end cap booth probably about the size of, of four booths and this year it seemed like kind of like a downgrade for them so i'm curious you know what's kid robots presence going to be like a designer con this year is it going to be larger the same as before or was it kind of be a little more low-key well kid robot has always had a 10 by 30 booth at uh, designer con and i think kid robot also realizes that a lot of the vendors that are at our show are their resellers. So I think a lot of the time why a company like Kid Robot will be like, look, we only need a 10 by 30 because we're only bringing a handful of exclusives. And they have the same size booth. I think they have a 10 by 20 or 10 by 30 at San Diego because all they do is they bring a handful of exclusives 
that they sell at the show and they don't need much room for that. So they're still a big player in the scene. It's just they just I, I just don't think they need that kind of space. Whereas a company like Metacom, which never does a show in the US and whose products are very hard to find in the US, they need to make that kind of like a hey, look at us, look like look look what we've got. Same with Pop Life. You know, Pop Life they I think they actually do maybe two or three shows in the US. One of them is San Diego Comic Con and one of them is us. And, you know, they make a big presence every single time because they have big statues and big products and, you know, they like to make a big splash. So it, it really depends on what the company is bringing and who the company is. Right. I, I, I mean, it's a good point. I didn't actually ever think about the fact that a lot of booths there would be selling Kid Robot merchandise. So they're kind of – it makes sense that they yeah. wouldn't want to sell a bunch of that. Right, right. Yeah, hearing it now, it does make a lot more sense. And, you know, they also do like a lot of um, pre-orders, you know, many, many months in advance. So a lot of their sales have already been done. So maybe they don't necessarily need the, the huge convention experience. It doesn't seem like they're gearing up for conventions as much as like they used to, where they would have a lot of hype behind convention releases and doing the lines and all the artist signings and stuff like that. It doesn't seem like they're doing that as much anymore. So um, this is all kind of sort of makes sense. So Ben, I guess they're not going to have like a much larger presence at designer con as maybe some, as some of the other companies. Oh no, we're actually, <laughs> we're actually working on something very special with kid robot for this year. Ooh. And if you want more information, you have to talk to George about it. I don't, is that, did is we discuss it, is, this last night? Is, is, I think we did. Is, is it the designer con Donnie series? I don't know that that's even secret anymore. If that's what it is. It is a designer con Dunny series. Yes. Yeah, we talked about that last time, didn't we? Oh, okay. I think, so. I think we did. Was it announced? George. We talked about that afterwards. Was it announced? I don't know if it was announced. I think we got it out of you. Oh. I swear we talked about it last time, too. <laughs> well, Are you allowed to announce that, Ben, because it's on the show now. Yeah, well, I get, we're, we're waiting for Kid Robot to let us announce it. <laughs> so... Uh, good for all of the people listening to the show that you guys get first heads up, but yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be an entire, uh, series of Dunnies that feature artists that have been part of the show for a long time. And, uh, it's kind of our way of saying thank you to those artists, but also saying thank you to the fans. Oh, cool. Nice. So I... George, you're getting a Dunny. Oh no, I don't have a Dunny. Are you curating it? Oh uh, yeah. I'm just helping the. You know, ah. project management part of it. Yeah, George is full project manager on the on the whole thing. Uh, it, it it would not have happened if it wasn't for George. Wow, George, well, you're such George. a big player now. I just, I just send emails. I'm not really doing anything. You just you just, you just push things around. Exactly. Well, thanks for I sending think... an email my way, buddy. Oh, well, if you would start going to Designer Con instead of poo pooing it every year. Oh. Yeah, Gary, it's your fault. I apologize. I had a family. Sorry. Oh, man, but I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited, too, but I, Ben mentioned that Kid Robot hasn't mentioned it, so maybe we shouldn't go much further than that. Let's just kind of leave it a nice little leak and let's move on. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're, we're also serious. working on, um, on a few new things also. We're working this year on it, – it's still in the works, but we're working on a tech zone for the show this year. VR? Uh, not just VR. We're we're talking to companies that have different aspects um, for all the designers and artists and illustrators. Like for instance, one of the companies that we're talking to right now, and they actually approached us, was Pixology. George, do you know who that company is? I have no idea who that is. You should, because they create a piece of software called ZBrush. Oh. Yeah. So. They've approached us, and we, you know, we're working in, we're we're trying to get them to be part of this new tech zone. Um, then, you know, uh, the guys that make like the drawing tablets, the guys that make three D printers, the guys that make the, you know, different things that go into the three D printers, the guys that make the scanners for the three D printers. We're trying to build this like tech zone in the show where parts and pieces that are involved in the actual manufacturing and 
uh, creation of the lot, a, lot, a lot of the things that you see on the floor, you can now understand how to do it yourself using these products. That will be really cool. Ooh. I really like that, especially ZBrush, because I've been curious to learn more about it. So yeah, yeah, fingers and crossed. Avery, well, and I know you've. It's, I've always seen kind of a presence at Decon of stuff kind of like that. I remember in the, um, I think it was Hall C. There was kind of a techie area, and then I always tend to see like some resin booths where you can buy, um, you know, like molding and casting products and whatnot. So it's it, it makes sense. It's a good fit, kind of an expansion of that in the tech side. Yeah, I, I I hope so. I hope people appreciate it. And we're like I said, we're trying we're trying new things all the time, and I think people will dig it. Can Decon be like tomorrow, Ben? I just want to go. <laughs> please, oh God, no, 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 please, no. I can't have it tomorrow. I I know. I, I just want it. I I look at the website almost every day, and we have that counter. And I just remember like seeing yeah, the counter was. a couple of days ago. It was like 120 some days, and I'm like, "Oh my god, it's like <laughs> it's it's almost here. It's coming, and it's like it's ridiculous." Hey, and, side note, Ben. Yeah. So I, I'm glad Gary asked about the timing for for the VIP slash preview night on Friday. I could not find that anywhere on the website, and so. When I was trying to start looking at travel and stuff, I was like, oh, I wonder what time the stuff is on Friday. You may want to look into getting, Putting, that, getting that on there. We Well, there is a lot of stuff that still needs to be updated on the website. But the one well, the one page that I made sure to update right away as soon as we had information was the show info page. And you can either click on where it says on top show info or, info, or I added another link just in case people don't know to click the top because it's a drop-down menu. I also added a page called Hotels and Basics underneath that. And it has things like the dates, the times, the location, parking, parking map, all the hotel links, uh, the links to book the hotels as well as other hotels in the area, recommended airports to fly into, as well as that countdown clock that stares at me every day. So. Okay, so... <laughs> I'm a dumb dumb Gary because it does have <laughs> it does have Friday hours on here. I don't know why I couldn't find it before, but you're right, it, Ben. It's all it's, right here. But you know, it's funny because you're not you're not the only one, so don't feel stupid. And the reason why I I made that hotels and basics page is because a lot of people would go o over show info and they'd see like panels and party and schedule, and they'd be like, "Well, where's the basic hotel like info?" And like right. they didn't know they could click on show info. Which is why we now have that link up there. Gotcha. Okay. And I could have looked before that was up there, but that is <laughs> this is a super super helpful page uh, for anyone looking for all sorts of info. And I don't know. I don't. I know we were talking about other things, and I don't want to divert too much. But that is one thing I was going to ask about too, Ben. Is uh, so I've been hearing a lot of people even before Five Point saying I've already started booking my hotel and looking at flights because. Yep. Anaheim's kind of a different animal with Disney. And so I'm hearing that I need to be booking like now. Would you agree? I would I would definitely agree. Okay. I would definitely agree and, because as for especially for the people like listening to the show and the people in in our world already that know about Decon, do it now because there's going to be some really big heavy announcements happening next week at comic-con which okay. is gonna fill up those hotel rooms pretty damn quickly okay so now the whoa, hotel whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> okay ben i'm not gonna be releasing oh, i'm not releasing the episode this monday i'm releasing the monday after san diego comic-con so we can, can we talk after, about after comic-con yeah so can you mention some of the big things someone else is gonna be mentioned or do you want to them leak it through their stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I guess I could mention it. So, yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> this is the, what we get for you being late on Thursday. This, okay. So, the, um, the, there's going to be a very, very big announcement being made Friday night of Comic Con at Comic Con. By who? Who's making this announcement? 
there is a company. There's a company. <laughs> and Stop dancing around, company, Ben. Who is it? Uh, they're called Saturday Morning. Saturday Morning. And they are going to be doing the announcement during their event oh, okay. that they have going on on Friday during Comic Con. All right. Who is Saturday Morning? I don't know. Never heard of them. <laughs> okay. So. All right, you know what? We might as well just spill the beans. Okay, Saturday Morning is a brand new product line of a larger company. And oh, okay. I guess I've got a backup here, and I've got to kind of tell the full story if, if we're just going to do this. Um, <laughs> so... <sighs> hold on, hold on. The yeah. announcement has been made by the time this comes out, correct? Correct. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay, okay, so, it's, so it's okay to say this. Go for yes. it. Yes. So here's here's what's happening. Um, a few months ago, around the same time that we went to Japan, I got a vendor request from Funko. Oh. And Funko, they wanted to be a vendor. And my, my reaction was, of course, no. There is no way I'm going to let Funko in, into the show. I don't want a Funko booth. I don't want pop vinyl being like this huge booth selling pop vinyl where there's massive lines and all that stuff. And it was just like, uh, I was just like, no, this is not going to happen at Decon. So I, I sent them a message telling them, like, unfortunately, like, uh, Designer Con is not for Funko. Um, I got a message back from an associate that's working on the show with us that brought in Metacom, one of the guys from Funko contacted him also because he's he knows him very well and also reached out about Funko being at the show, in which I once again replied, no, hmm. Funko is not going to be at the show. And they were like, hold on, hold on, hold on. We have to tell you what's this all about. And have you guys seen the uh, Funko documentary on Netflix? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so you guys know who Mike Becker is now. Oh, yeah, yes. yeah, okay. the Funko founder, yeah. Right, so uh, Mike Becker reached out to me and basically said, look, I've been coming to your show for years, and I know what your show is all about, and I know what the audience wants, and I understand how you want to keep the integrity of the show and how you want to keep the feel of the show and oh, we don't want to bring any pop final we're, we we don't want to set up even a funko booth we want to set up something completely different completely new that we think your audience will love and hmm. i said okay you've got my interest and i'm thinking like great they've designed another line of vinyl toys yeah God, please don't pitch me pins. You know, it's like, <laughs> what, what, what is this? And so if you guys watch the documentary, you actually got to see the product in the documentary. You got to actually see this. And um, <laughs> the, when, when you think, let's, if you look at the name of the booth, the name is Saturday morning. So Teresa, I'm going to ask you this. When you think of Saturday mornings, what do you think of? <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure uh, people are thinking of car cartoons. You car used to okay. sit down and watch. watch yeah, TV. but but associating, like, yeah, absolutely. That's the first thing. Like you got your cartoons, but what else is really associated when you're watching those cartoons on Saturday mornings? I bet I'm gonna fail. <laughs> <laughs> you're not gonna fail. It, like she's too really, young. Like, the, all the cartoons were done by the time she came. Hey now, I mean he's kind of right though. <laughs> you didn't have like, to say Saturday mornings. You got to be asking Gary this question, and I already know the answer, so I can't participate. Well, that's the thing. If, yeah, it's like everybody. May, maybe you are a little bit young for it, Teresa, but everybody in our age group answers the same thing. And Gary, I, what do you associate <laughs> Saturday morning? With? I mean, of course, the Saturday morning cartoons, eating Dunkin' Donuts, and my father forcing me to do yard work for him. <laughs> but when you did watch those cartoons. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, you guys watched the documentary. You saw the cool product. No, just... uh, Saturday morning though, it's just Saturday morning to me is Saturday morning cartoons. Exactly what Teresa said. Like, Sitting right. in front of the um, TV. 
It's so yeah, sitting you, sit, there you sit in front of the TV. You eat your. Dunkin' bowl Donuts, cereal. bowl of cereal. Oh, so they're doing the, are they bringing just, just the cereal boxes? Because they've re- announced this week, now they're doing limited edition they know, are bringing Funko the cereal cereals. Box. Okay. Correct. Oh, no. So, Saturday mornings is uh, Funko's new line of cereal. Okay, that's fun. I like and, that. And Designer Con is going to have all these cool limited edition cereals in their cool cereal boxes available at decon now i cannot tell you the products that will be available All right. i can't but can i ask can i ask ben well so it's funny because i actually had posted about the new funko cereals in our stomping ground because i saw them and i was like this is really cool i really like this so you like them um, okay all right I, I i love the idea i mean we actually talked about it a little bit about the names of them and the flavors and how maybe even like a blind box spin on it where you don't like it's a theme, but you don't know the one you're going to pull from the box kind of a thing. But what yeah. I'm curious of is what they're doing with the current one is there's their pop culture theme. So like Jason or Gollum or yeah. you know, Lord of the Rings. Kind of, so is it going to be a designer con spin instead where it's, <laughs> I can't tell you. Okay. <laughs> Well, here's the here's the thing. I get to tell you this because this was already announced Friday at their event, which was, by the way, streaming live on the Internet. Um, and the announcement that they made is that Saturday mornings is also making a collaboration piece with Metacom. Oh, crap. So to answer your question, Teresa... Are they going to have a spin on this whole pop culture serial thing? Are they going to make it more towards the designer con audience? Based on that announcement, yeah, sounds like you, yes. I think, I think you, pop styled bear bricks. No, go, go, the, op- go make, the opposite direction. I think I think it's going to be opposite. I think it's going to be Funko makes the serial but themes it after stuff from our scene. That's what I mean. That's why I thought bear brick. But not, but not pop. No, but I was thinking, yeah. like, are they going to put, like, maybe the Bear Bricks in, like, a Decon O's styled cereal or something like that? You're going to have to wait and see. Wait and see. It's, it's a very cool collaboration. There's going to be some really cool exclusive stuff. Um, I cannot tell you the details, like, you know, definitely. Um, but it's at, stay tuned, you know, as we get closer and closer to the show, there's going to be lots of announcements. But the big announcement Ooh. that was made. Um, this past Friday at, at Funko Fun Days, wow. which is their big event, they actually have a uh, – they actually played a video that Akashi made for them oh. that basically says that Metacom and <laughs> Funko have partnered up to make a really cool collaboration during Designer Con. Wow, this this is really unexpected, but I'm kind of excited for the potential. Teresa, book your flight now before it goes out to the Funko community. That I was gonna say now I yeah. now I know why you're saying what you're saying because Funko the Funko community is massive, and so and pulling the, them in. And here's the thing: this is not just announced to the Funko community that's there. This is the first time that Funko Fun Days is going to be broadcasted live on the internet around the world. Mm -hmm. So everything that they announce, everything that they say, every video that they show will be shown to all of those Funko fans watching on the internet that night. Man. Let's do a live feed watching that Funko Fun Days. (laughs) I'll be there. You're going to have a blast. You ever been, Ben? I have not. <laughs> ben, Ben. Uh, no, it's easily one of the funnest nights I've, I've had. Yeah, really? Yeah, because it's, it's just a huge grand party. I mean, they really know how to celebrate and appreciate their fans. It's, uh, it's like a three-hour event of just food, fun, prizes, performances, and it's giveaways galore. They ensure that their fans leave with big smiles on their faces. <laughs> well... I'm I'm excited to go, and uh, I, during the July Fourth weekend, I was down in San Diego, and um, I actually got to meet Mike 
because his offices are actually – I don't know if a lot of people know, but Funko's South. office – Yeah, Funko South is in San Diego. It is, it's like one train stop away from the convention center. It's so funny that they're right there, right in the middle of it all. Three-minute walk and you're there. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, I got to meet with him, and yeah, like they're planning some amazing things. Just he's gonna make that a really yeah. whatever they have planned for Designer Con. If Mike's behind it, Fun Maker Mike, they call him. It's it's gonna be a really fun booth to stop by yeah. and visit. So now, that's gonna be cool. Here's the other thing that we're gonna tell you guys about the whole Saturday mornings thing, and I was very adamant about this when I was talking to Mike and when we were planning the whole Funko thing, because I can already hear it. Designer Con is bringing in Funko. It's going to be insane. They don't care, blah, 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 blah. So we've already explained that, look, this is a completely different product than pop. There's going to be no pop vinyl being sold. This is a completely different aspect. This is something fun for the collectors. And Teresa kind of already hit the nail, hit the head on the nail, like, about the whole designer aspect of it being involved because that's really what you're doing. You're buying these cereal boxes that are being designed. But going back to the root of Decon, the root of Decon has always been the artist, the designer, the people behind what we buy and what we collect. And that's why, and I don't, I don't think Funko has ever done this, Funko is literally bringing down their design team all those people that design the pop, design the art on the cereal boxes, design all the stuff that all these um, uh, Funko collectors love and you know all the things that we are going to have at the show, they're actually bringing the artists and the designers down to the show so you can meet them, get their signatures. They're printing special things for the collectors to have um, at no cost where you could get it signed. It's going to be Ooh. it's going to be very much geared toward our community and very much going toward that whole like back to the whole artist, back to the whole design element of things. Cool. I mean, I know Gary and I are kind of we we have zero hate for Funko, and so I hope the rest of the scene will be open because I think it's all sounds super exciting. Any of all out there doubting? Don't be doubtful. Be positive. Is it gonna be really cool? Give yeah. it, a, give it, a, give it a chance. That's what I say. Yeah. Hey, Gary, you think Greg will come? Is Greg gonna be? Uh, I don't know. What, what I think of the pop cereals, I'm pretty certain it's Funko South that's behind all the cereal boxes. Yeah. They're, they're the ones behind all the T-shirts and all that. So yep. maybe they're bringing the Funko South design team and not necessarily design team that Greg works for. So, but maybe it would be awesome to see Greg there. Yeah, we'll yeah, see. I'm just I can make a request. <laughs> yeah, yeah, put a request in there. Like, maybe I can I see him more Greg. than once a year. And then we'll, so we'll, we'll do some uh, we'll do some twin things at the event. So Ben, that was that was huge news. But now should we tell the people about the Marsham Toy Hour Pavilion? <laughs> uh, That'd be news to me. Yes. So at the Marsham Toy Hour Pavilion, we're going to be putting on uh, Price is Right styled designer con games. We're going to be doing. Toy Jeopardy, um, all sorts of fun Wait, stuff. So, Gary, are you serious? Yeah, no. I was, no. Serious? Really I'm not serious, but let's do it. Why not? <laughs> I love it. No, I'm not serious, but let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> it can't. It can't be preview night or, well, or Saturday because I'm going to be shopping. But if you want to set up something Sunday, Ben, I'm open to it. I think. Okay. I, I, I think what you're getting at, maybe, Gary, is not so much a pavilion or booth, but the offering of us potentially doing something like a panel. Yeah, like a panel or but something not just like where we're just talking to the audience. I want to do something where the audience is as involved as we are. Like, that's why I was thinking maybe we could do the game night where maybe audience or our listeners can compete for a chance to come up and play uh, Toy Jeopardy or Family Feud or Price is Right style game. You know, imagine just yelling into the audience, so and so, come on down, and they, you know, they try to bid on what the price of a toy is going to be or something like that. You know, I think that'd be fun. I don't want to interview artists and because it's a pain in the ass trying to track down these artists and get them to commit to doing these sort of interview style things. So that's why I want to do something fun. You know yeah, what? Sure. Let's uh, let's talk about it. Let's see what we can do. Okay. Let's do it. All righty. 
Alrighty. Okay, what else? <laughs> what else is what else is there? Um Man, uh, I mean, Gary, what else? Holy crap. I don't know. I Should we just wrap it up? Because that was huge. No, 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 no. I have questions. Okay, and so do I. So I guess before we get to that, let's take a brief moment and mention some of our sponsors. So Ben is joining us, and he is the owner of 3D Retro. So you can go to 3DRetro.com for all your designer toy needs, wants, and desires. And he also has a brick-and-mortar location out there in Southern California, Burbank and Jason. So if you're in the area, be sure to check it out. Also, there's strangecattoys.com. Load up that cart, and be sure to use promo code SOTERESA at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Again, that's SOTERESA, all one word, S-O-T-H-E-R-E-S-A. And for all your daily designer toy news, be sure to like and follow SpankyStokes.com and TheToyChronicle.com. And if you haven't already, be sure to download the Toy Chronicle app at one of your favorite app stores. It's amazing. It's everything you need at the click of a cool little icon. All right, Teresa, what other questions do you have for Ben? I'm trying to think. So we were talking about like tech booths and and that kind of idea to kind of help dig into some aspects that are related to people creating work. I was curious, and I don't know if it's a vision for this year, Ben, or just future, but uh-huh. Do you ever see workshops coming into play where, like, I could come in and, like, make my own little resin figure from start to finish and kind of learn how it how it's made and all that? Yeah. Actually, it's really funny that you say that because <laughs> um, I don't think it's going to happen this year. But we've been talking to a couple of artists that want to team up and do something like that where <laughs> it – the, the logistics of it have to be all figured out because, you know, materials have to be paid for. Artists' time need to be paid you for. You say know. the name of the one that wanted to do it first. Well, the one that wanted to do it with with a group of other artists is Paul Frank. Oh. And Paul has, has actually done this in the past. He usually has, like, uh, a larger booth at a show, and then, you know, they sell maybe 20 spots – where you come in at your allotted time and you literally sit there with Paul Frank and he teaches you how to make a designer toy. Cool. And he'll he'll help you out with it and he'll teach you secrets and little trade things like that. And at the end of it all, you get to go home with this toy that you have made with Paul Frank. So wow. it, it's funny that you say that because – he wanted to do it this year, but he, you know, clearly Paul doesn't have time to do it like every hour of every day. So he wanted to get other artists involved where it's like you can sign up for his and then you can sign up for maybe an hour later with somebody that's doing resin toys. And then maybe you can do a sculpting thing with somebody and then, you know, just all these different workshops. Yeah. There's a lot of logistics involved, and you know clearly we want to make sure that everyone is compensated for their time and materials. So yep. even though we would love to do it this year, I just don't think it's going to happen. But yeah, for future years, we're probably going to have something like that. I love the idea of it. I think it would be super fun, even if it meant buying like a workshop ticket. I can tell you now, it'll be great for other people, Ben, but Teresa does not have the time to do it at DesignerCon. <laughs> she's running around like a maniac talking to anybody and everybody and filling but, up four backpacks of stuff. You're not going to have time. <laughs> no, but like but I could see making the time for it. If I, and, I actually yeah. thought that Gary was going to say that you don't have time to do it because you're running the Marsham pavilion. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That, <laughs> that pavilion's going to be dead. She's going to have plenty of time to go shopping. That's fine. <laughs> no, it's, I agree with you. I think, Preview night, obviously, out of the question because you know I'll be VIP or whatever the heck I need to be there because that's happening. And then uh, Saturday, your your press. I think I think yeah. you're getting your press badge. Oh yeah, I'm press now. I'm fancy. <laughs> um, but Saturday obviously is like full on shop. But I, Sunday, Gary, if we want to, if you all want to talk through and think through some kind of fun game thing, I'm down. Okay, let's do it. Let's but do it. okay. So workshops was one thing. The other question I want to go back to, we were talking earlier about, um, you know, vendors and uh, the size of the event and all of that. And I know you said that you had like a 2,000 plus wait list or something that was insane. 
So because of the size this year, have you been able to allow a lot of those people that have been waiting for a while to participate? Are they actually going to be able to come this year? Um, a not lot. All 2000. <laughs> not yeah, not all two thousand. As much as I, I, I can't say that a lot, but I believe uh, we've let about an additional, like off the list, probably we've covered about fifteen or twenty percent of the list. Okay. So that's still a good chunk if you think about it. And, um, you know, it's funny because we when we send out the mailer uh, to the person that we're telling them, like, congratulations, you've been, you know, selected off of the wait list. You can now go register. We've actually had a couple of responses, which which is a good one, where they say, hey, my friend already has a booth and we're just splitting it. So go oh, ahead okay. and uh, – pass the booth on to the next person which is fantastic that's great we are we're all about you know artists sharing booths with their friends and all that we understand that we don't have artist tables and uh you know everybody's a 10 by 10 so if you need to split a booth go right ahead and we're, we're happy to do that cool i have a question okay. we haven't touched on yet go ahead george um so last year i got a sweet fez um at <laughs> And I just want to know if there's going to be any more parties with Fezzes for me. So last year, we had the after party at the Masonic Temple in Pasadena. And we, because it was at the Masonic Temple, the VIP t-shirts were themed Masonic, and we made the Fez hats. So since we're not doing it at a Masonic Temple this year, George, unfortunately, there will not be any more Fezzes. But does that <sighs> still be a party? Yes, there will still be a party. It, it's actually going to be with a pretty large band. And, um, the I, well, I guess I could say the name. The, the band that we're, um, we're going to have playing the party is Chevy Metal. I'm sorry, Ben. Yeah. I, I don't do music, so I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, well, how do I – I, I guess I can um, – Get- Chevy it, Metal? Is this another name like uh, Saturday Mornings where they're yeah, really a bigger band? Oh, you, oh, really? Yeah, it's kind of like that. So <laughs> do you guys know who the Foo Fighters are? Yes. Fam. Yes, I've heard of them. That's, if okay. that's them, that's huge. Yeah, so... Um, Jesus. <laughs> so basically it's the Foo Fighters, but... What? What? Yeah, oh, wow. so but they go under the name Chevy Metal. You can look them up. It's it's spelled C H E V Y and then Metal. And what it is is it's basically like it's the Foo Fighters, but they don't play Foo Fighters music. So they're technically not advertising themselves as the Foo Fighters because they're not going to play any Foo Fighter songs. They're covering heavy metal rock huh. and roll songs, and that's actually why the theme of this year's show is rock and roll. Ah, oh, gotcha. that makes sense. Yeah. So holy, holy, and that's bro. kind of and that's kind of why if you look at our mascot this year, he may look like a very popular rock and roll singer that we all know. Ben, you're not just taking designer con to the next level. Like you said, screw you, next level. We're going intergalactic <laughs> with this thing. <laughs> we, yeah, you know what? We, um, you're Marty. You're Marty McFly. You've plugged in your guitar into the amp, and you're you're not settling for low. You're cranking all knobs to overdrive. Damn. Rock and roll, man. <laughs> There's going to be a lot more announcements about the party as well. There's going to be some, of course, exclusive uh, merchandise in regards to like what we like and collect, and it's going to be at the party. And the best part about the party this year is that we've completely separated the party from this, the whole VIP thing, whether you have a oh, one-day nice. pass. Yeah. Whether you have a one day pass, a weekend pass or a VIP pass, anybody can buy uh, a party ticket. Awesome. It doesn't matter who you are. So I really like that change. Yeah. So you can come party with us no matter who you are. Just party tickets are going to be completely separate. Uh, I wish I knew the cost, but I don't right now. And, you'll be able to get access to all the cool merchandise. And I think that once the word goes out that 
Chevy Metal is the main band, and we're still going to have Secret Walls, and we're still going to have a bunch of other stuff there. Uh, but yeah, the big thing is Chevy Metal, and they have a lot of fans, so we think we're going to get a crowd there. Now, the party will not be open to non-decon attendees, right? right. Yes. You have okay. to be. You have to have a decon ticket to get to into get. the party. Okay. Yeah. So uh, that could be people who are that into Chevy Metal to buy both tickets, possibly. Yes. Possibly. Okay. Which, once again, will get another audience into the show. People that, you know, they be like, they might be like, I really want to go to this party. I don't know what decon is, but they must be cool because they have Chevy Metal playing their after party. I'm going to go ahead and buy the ticket to the show, walk the go show check and check the stuff out. And they're, of course, they're going to fall in love with everything that we have to offer. <laughs> and Of course. And bam, we have more people buying our stuff. You know, I got to say, for anyone listening who will listen to this episode, if you're not excited about Decon after listening to all this, you're crazy. Because I, I want to go now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't want to be that person. If you're that person that's thinking, oh, I don't know how I'm going to go. It's the weekend before Thanksgiving. I really shouldn't travel. Like, just do it. Because I can tell you, you don't want to have regrets. You don't no, want to be the person that's looking at your Instagram feed on that weekend wishing you were there. Because you could be that person. You could be there. You'd be having the time of your life. So just make it happen. Plus, bring the family. Bring the family. D- Disneyland's right across the street. Speaking of Disneyland, last time you were on, you mentioned that you might be looking into potential discounts for maybe VIP holders or pass holders. Ha- has anything come f- to fruition on that? Yes. Uh, the good people at the Disney uh, parks and resorts have told us that I believe it's going to be the end of this month. Our link to purchase discounted tickets are going to be available. It's going to be available. Yeah. So if you're a ticket holder to uh, DesignerCon, you will be given a link where you can buy a discounted Disneyland ticket. And um, I think you have a duration of like the entire week of DesignerCon to use it. All right. You know what might be a little different for me this year than last year? I might have kids in tow. There you go. Good stuff. So now I got to really plan. I mean, if I got to book this weekend, I have to keep that in mind and decide if I want to do Disney. Because normally I just come in, do the show, leave kind of a thing. Oh, no. You can't do that this year. Can you do Dis- Disneyland the week before? Can you go before? We, yeah, because you go like yeah. Thursday or – Yeah, so technically okay. uh, um, you can the, – the show starts on Friday, and I believe you are able to use the ticket as – early as that Sunday, the su- the Sunday before, mm-hmm. and all the way to like Wednesday or Thursday after. So okay, nice. there's, a, there's, a, there's like this 13 or 14 day window okay. which you can use the ticket. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have the family go off with me the week before, and then I'm going to kick their butts out when Designer Con actually <laughs> starts. <laughs> yeah. Very, I was t- thinking about, remember I was looking at, so the semi-related to this, I was trying to look at flights to Ben, and uh, I was struggling with which airport to fly into, because there's obviously LAX, but then there's the one in, I think it's Santa Ana, um, which is Wayne. close. To, yeah, whatever one's closer to Anaheim. Yeah. The tickets, like, were, the prices were already ridiculous, and so I was telling Gary, I was like, hey, it might be cheaper for me to just fly into Phoenix and then drive up to California with you. Yeah. So, I don't know. We'll have to we'll have to coordinate. But do you thinking of flights and the people trying to fly in? I mean, to your knowledge, do you feel like either airport works okay? So, like, if I had to do LAX, how long of a drive would I be looking at to get from LAX into Anaheim? So, one thing that I told you guys last time, which I highly recommend everybody still do this, is that look into the Disneyland shuttles. Usually, uh, when you land at LAX, which is your cheapest option, I'm going to tell you right now, landing into LAX is your cheapest option because there's such a big airport and there's so many flights going in and out. So fly into LAX, find a Disneyland shuttle. It's either going to be a free shuttle that they provide to you. They have a lot of those because Disneyland wants people to go to Disneyland 
uh, and they'll provide that free shuttle for you, especially, I think, if you have a ticket to the park. Or it'll be like a minimal fee, like a $20 fee or something like that. And uh, the drive usually from LAX to Disneyland or uh, to the convention center is in good traffic, 40 to 45 minutes, and in bad traffic, about an hour to an hour 20. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. So I got one more question, Gary, and then we can try to squeeze in some listener questions. You mentioned when we were talking about the after party designer con merch, and I think I've harped on this before, but I'm going to bring it up again. <laughs> so shirts. I really, really want a cute shirt. Okay. Not a black shirt, not an all manly shirt. I want a cute, colorful shirt. Is that in the works? And if not, can we make it happen? I will talk to the good people at Johnny Cupcakes and see what we can do. Or we could get a designer on board, maybe, to design something, print it up, maybe. Yeah. maybe. Talk to the, design- the designers out there. Yeah. Let them know that you would appreciate some non-black shirts. Non-black. Noted. Non-black Cute. shirts. That's what our scene buys. Yeah. Black. It, it really oh, is. I- Oh, but I really want a cute one. Well, if you At want least... cute and you want colored shirts, go to bindlewood.com. They get a wide variety of cute <laughs> shirts and a variety of pretty colors. There you well, go. I have. <laughs> I, they do, but – or at least, like, if you want to do a black shirt, fine. Maybe gray, like a heather. Maybe we could get away with that. But just maybe a cute, a cute artist design. <laughs> okay. Not like a smoking, gross, melty monster. <laughs> but everybody loves smoking, gross, melty monsters. I know. Maybe I'm just a weirdo. and I'm. Just, but I know I'm not the only one. I'm not the only cute lover. There's other people like me in the scene. I promise. All right. Just no, no. no I'll, you know what? I'll, I'll mention it. I'll mention it to the, the guys that are doing our shirts. I appreciate it. No problem. Okay. <laughs> That's my little t-shirt plug. Whew. All right. That's a re- George, you have anything to to add? Dude, I got to talk about Chevy Metal. I think I did my job. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It sounds like you're in the middle of an airport, George. Or on a yeah, plane. I'm at the fly I'm in the flyover path of the Van Nuys Airport. Okay. And it freaking sucks because every few seconds it sounds like that. I try to mute it, but I forgot to mute it when that one went over. Well, usually when we talk to you, you were always mentioning that, but I can never hear it. But for some reason, something is different tonight where I can actually hear the plane noise. Uh, I have the window open because it's a thousand degrees. (laughs) (laughs) So you and I both are sitting in our MeUndies. Montreal Toy Hour sponsored by MeUndies. They're a great fit. Uh, Lots of great styles. So check them out. Oh, my God. That's right. Gary, do you really have MeUndies? Were you you persuaded by a Facebook ad? You know what? No, I wasn't. (laughs) But every podcast I listen to is either sponsored by Blue Apron or MeUndies. So if we can get oh, on geez. that, because I, I currently pay a weekly subscription for Blue Apron. So if they want us, I'll sponsor them. They just have to send me a box for free every week. Dude, I oh will my. wear MeUndies every day if they want to send us some MeUndies. I don't know what's going on here. And I'll I'm tell gonna... you if they're comfortable or not. <laughs> oh, man. We need to get some sponsors to actually start sending us stuff. We have a lot of sponsors, but we don't get stuff sent to us. We need, oh, we need cash. We, I don't, man, eh, the cash pays for our monthly Podbean subscription. Like we, we're not, we're not charging that much. That's yeah. true. All right. So what else can we let's <laughs> get to some listener questions? Yeah. I mean, we, uh, we talked about, we were going to ask, pick on you all about behind the counter or ask about 3d retro. I don't know if you have any news here, on you. Here's a good one. When can we expect George to be kicked off behind the counter again? <laughs> Never. <laughs> that Never. is not happening anymore. Did ever. You, did you learn that was a mistake? We kind of. I give him two. I give him two months. <laughs> no. <laughs> Let's move on. Let's keep it friendly. <laughs> okay. So so moving on. Um. So Ben, you run 3D Retro. So is 3D Retro gearing up and preparing a bunch of releases for DesignerCon this year? Um. Yeah. We're actually. Uh, we're actually. You should just ask George. <laughs> Because he's working on all of our projects. Dude, just uh, cross your fingers that 3D Retro has anything at their booth at this point. Uh, <laughs> the way this guy it, freaking plans. There, there's your answer, Gary. <laughs> yeah. If all goes well, 3D Retro will have like 20 new toys. At, wow. At D23. 
decon. Yeah. But we'll see how many make it. <laughs> and the other thing is, is we also have a lot of toys that we are making with um, Universal for the Jurassic Park art show. Yeah, I don't think you've talked about this last time. Wait, what is a Jurassic Park art show? Oh, I didn't tell you guys? No, you haven't mentioned this oh. at all. You should totally talk about what is this. this. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, then I guess there's another thing I should tell you. During this year's Designer Con, we usually have like art shows and things like that. And, you know, we're, we're going to be bringing in like a thousand toys again. They're going to be doing stuff. And, you know, there's a couple of other booths doing art shows. But the big one that we're really happy to announce is that we have teamed up with Universal to do a 25th anniversary Jurassic Park art show featuring some of the bigger artists in our scene. I didn't get an email yeah. on that. You guys got my email, right? Oh, did, did that, how, you know, you gotta, you gotta, talk, you gotta be a big name artist, I assume. You gotta talk right. to George. I asked George if you Hey, wait a minute. God I didn't get an email about this either. Ben, am I supposed to be in charge of this? Because oh, I haven't my, contacted anyone. Hey, guys, my microphone is breaking up. I can't hear you. What are you guys talking about again? What's going on? So, no, so what's going on? There's a uh, Universal Studios themed. Yeah, so, um, We've we've teamed up with Universal, and um, we're we wanted to do this art show, so we teamed up with them, and it's basically a, an art show celebrating the 25th anniversary of the original movie, which is this year. And one of the things that we're doing is we've got some artists on board to allow us to create very 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 limited edition vinyl figures in regards to Jurassic Park, but done in the artist style. Oh, cool. A lot of ice cream dinos coming. Ice cream and hamburger dinos. Hold on to your seats, people. Now, wait. So, <laughs> it's, it's the, the theme is just loosely Jurassic Park, but the artists can kind of do whatever they want with it, and they're going to make production pieces of each artist's No, 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 no. The, the, it's an actual art show for Jurassic Park. Those are so, two different events he's talking about. One is there's an art show of Jurassic Park where Ben, who's coordinating that? Who's who's put it like who's getting the artists for that? The artists are being uh coordinated by uh Carmen Carmen Acosta. She runs like Eat Your Art Out LA and um she's done a couple of art shows already that were within Decon, so we we hired her to do the curating for the show. Okay, and now the second thing he's mentioning, Teresa, is uh, 3D Retro is producing, so, with some artists as well, limited, very limited edition to vinyl toys that will be for sale at the show. Correct. Licensed okay. Jurassic Park properties, but done in artist styles. Correct, yes. Okay, cool. so the art, the art show, is it art as in, like, paintings or art yes. as in custom toys? Okay. Paintings, yeah. Paintings okay. and prints. Gotcha, okay. Gary, I think we can forgive Ben now for pushing us off a little bit because we yeah. did kind of deliver. <laughs> I was going to make Ben sweat it for a couple of weeks, and but you know what, man? Ben, you totally came through. Thank you so much. This was awesome. I've been busy, guys. <laughs> I understand now. Holy moly. You done good, Ben. I got to go, guys. I got stuff to do. <laughs> we had all these listener questions, and I don't think we're going to get to any of them. Most of them were pertaining to Designer Con anyway, so we'll, have them, we'll save them for next time. Yeah, I'll, you know, as the show gets closer, if you guys want me back, you know. When you can finally announce the rest of the stuff? When I can finally announce everything else, and we'll actually have a map online where you can go and look at all the booths and be like, oh my god, who's this? And oh my gosh, what's that? And you guys will... Uh, I heard you're working it. on the map, but how's that coming? The I'm map is kidding. coming along. The map is coming along. <laughs> that, was a, that was a private joke. Uh... Well, so. it's uh, exciting news. Thanks for disclosing everything that you did, and thanks for playing along on us guessing on what some of the stuff was and actually spilling the beans on some, some really cool stuff that's going on. And we'll have you on closer to the event when you can divulge all the other good stuff going on. Absolutely. There's always – we're working on so many other things along with these that we were able to announce today. Um there's there's so many so much cool stuff and um, we're just looking forward to having everybody join us this year. 
Yeah, definitely. I mean, it sounds amazing. So I'm glad that we're finally able to to make this episode work. And we'll definitely have you back on as the event gets a little closer. Yeah. Well, in the meantime, Ben, why don't you take a brief moment and let the listeners know where they can find uh, everything there is to know about you and 3D Retro and DesignerCon. Yeah, absolutely. If you want to find out more information about DesignerCon, we are slowly updating the website and um, ticket sales are going to be going up very soon. Please uh, follow us on Instagram and Facebook for all that information. We're just at DesignerCon and uh, same thing on Facebook, facebook.com slash DesignerCon. And um, of course, our website is DesignerCon.com. And uh, you can find out all the information about the show. And, of course, for 3D Retro and all of our cool toys that we're doing, we're at 3D Retro on Instagram and Facebook and 3DRetro.com. Do you want to take two minutes, I'll give you, to talk about the City Cryptids release party that you're having at 3D Retro? Oh, yeah, sure. That should be this Friday. Yeah, so, okay, yeah, so this Friday we have actually teamed up with Kid Robot, and we are going to be having the official release party for uh, Cryptid Dunnies. And um, during the party, we're going to have a lot of the artists in involved in the Dunny series actually coming to the event. So you can meet all your favorite artists, get them to sign your Dunnies. Um, you know, artists like Alex Pardee, uh, Scott Tolson, who, who I think curated the series. We have Skinner coming. We have um, uh, Kenny Bolton coming. I think we've just confirmed Chris Reiniak and Amanda Louis Spade are coming. Are you serious? The He's one awesome. event I'm missing, and you have all these people coming? Yes. <laughs> Damn it, I hate you. Yeah, they actually, they actually, one of the things that they specifically asked me was, is George going to be there? And I said, no. Well, and they're like, okay, cool, we're coming. <laughs> Seriously, that's what it feels like right now. <laughs> You picked a bad so, time to have G-Con, George. Seriously. I, I think the reason why we were able to get so many artists, especially the ones from different parts of the country, is because they were already out in the West Coast for San Diego. Ah. Well, that's awesome. That sounds like it's going to be a nice event for you, too. Should be a lot of fun. All right, Teresa, where can we find you? Oh, shoot. If people want to find me, they can check me out on Instagram. My username is tmhawk24. All right, George. I am at Double G Toys. Uh, I just want to say that Jessica says hi. She just texted me from her bachelorette party weekend. Uh, so that's why she's not here tonight. But uh, <laughs> she wanted to say hi to everybody. Hi, Jen. George, considering you tend to forget when when record times are, I'm going to text you on the day of your wedding to let you know you're supposed to get married that day. Okay, cool. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And, um, Can you give me like an hour notice? <laughs> I'll try. I'll give you a little more heads up than that. I'll give you 24 hours, and I'll hit you up every four hours after that. All right, great. Okay. <laughs> and I am Gary Ham. You can find me at Gary Ham on Instagram or superham.com. This has been the Marsham Toy Hour. We do this every week, not because we have to, but because we want to. So until our next transmission, we're signing off. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, no Ben. Problem, Thank you, guys. Oh, my gosh. Can't wait. My mind is blown. <laughs>